I want you to look carefully at my face because I really want to explain as you're looking at my face and everywhere that I've kind of contoured, I want to explain to you how it's all kind of like working hand in hand. Welcome back to another educational beauty video. Today's video is super educational. So today's video is all about underpainting. It's about how you can use concealer to conceal, to contour, and also sculpt your face. You guys are gonna love this. It's so detailed. I feel like everyone needs to know this and it's really easy to understand. Now, if you do like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you never miss any of my future videos. I am over on Instagram too. I do a lot of reels there, some unboxing. You get to see a bit of what I get up to when I'm not filming for YouTube. So please do come say hi there too. Now let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so today it's all about underpainting, a technique which I love and I have been using for so, so, so long. And you guys know that because I always, always try and tell you how amazing it is and how it's gonna completely change your makeup game. Now, we're gonna be kind of going through the entire process. Like how do we use concealers to sculpt and contour the face, which is basically a part of kind of underpainting. Because what we're gonna be doing is using those products before we actually apply our foundation. So your foundation is there to kind of like tie everything together as a very of color at the end. Now I've had a few people kind of comment with some questions on a recent reel that I did on Instagram regarding underpainting. I'm going to answer those as we go along. So first off I am going to start with my moisturizer because skincare is really really important and because we're currently in the winter month of December which it doesn't actually feel like it here in Dubai because it's just so warm still but at night time and early early morning it is actually a little bit chilly. I'm not going to say what the temperature is because you'll just laugh at me. We're going to be using Marrakesh Rich. Now this is perfect for this season i do use it throughout the summer as well when i feel like my skin is a little bit tight but this is basically gonna help to give us a really really good kind of just like really plump nice smooth finish to the skin which is just perfect for our base i'll be honest i just washed my face and it was feeling really really tight it's a little bit i'm not going to say dehydrated at the moment because i feel like at the moment because of the weather and not just the weather but also recently my skin's been feeling a little bit tight and that's why when i do apply this moisturizer i feel like i'm just giving it like i'm just like literally throwing a bucket of water at it it feels so good like right now when i applied it i was like oh my god it's just so soothing and just thank god i've got this moisturizer on now i think what i do like about this moisturizer is that it doesn't feel like it kind of just absorbs my skin absorbs it and then it feels dry or like tight again like i feel like it lasts once i've applied it that's it it's like cushioning my skin with that moisture and it's just perfect for me so anyway moving on we are going to be prepping the skin now so we've already applied our moisturizer i'm now going to go in with my eye cream i'm using my drunk elephant sea tango just going to get that around the eye area here and now i'm going in with my milk makeup hydro grip primer i'm just smoothing this over i'm not rubbing it in i'm just literally just smoothing it over the skin because it leaves like a tacky finish to the skin so what is underpainting underpainting is basically when you apply everything in terms of your concealer your liquid blush or cream blush if you're using a liquid or cream blush everything goes on underneath and then you finish off with your layer of foundation on top which is basically just a kind of veil of color on top to tie everything together this isn't actually a new trend this has been used by makeup artists like myself for decades it's genuinely a technique which gives you the most beautiful soft focus look and it's something that i know you're gonna love and i know that a lot of you who are kind of loyal subscribers of mine part of my youtube family have been actually using this technique as well since you've joined my community and you guys are loving it and it gives you that kind of really nice subtle like i said soft focus look it's great if you feel like you're not great at contouring or if you feel like you are still trying to get the hang of it and you're a bit scared of it then this is perfect for you because what happens is you're kind of like like i said adding a veil of color which is your foundation which should be a very light coverage foundation you're adding that at the end 
over everything that you've applied, like your concealer and everything, or whether you're using contour or whatever. We're gonna go through, we're gonna touch on that in a second. You're adding a layer of foundation right at the end, and then you're gonna set it as usual. And what happens is that contour that you've done underneath kind of like peeks through. So it gives you a very subtle contour. It do, it's not harsh. For me, honestly, I'm so obsessed with this technique and it's so kind of in my blood now that I feel like if I were to do contouring on top of foundation, like it just makes me think, no way. Like I, I just feel like I'm undone if you see what I mean. Like the whole look is undone because there's nothing there to give it that soft focus look. Like you're just kind of like left with raw edges and I don't like that. So I want to kind of explain this to you properly and show you in detail how you do this. Now I'm gonna show you my technique. Now this is no different to underpainting. It just means that I use different products for certain things. We're gonna be using concealers to sculpt and contour. I'm not gonna be using contour products because I very rarely do use them. Now we're gonna be starting with my concealer, which is is the Tarte Shape Tape in 35N Medium. Now what I'm gonna do firstly is prep my lids. So I'm gonna apply a little bit of concealer here, buff it in and then set it with powder. My eyelids are prepped then. So ready for anything else I'm gonna be doing on my face. So I'm just gonna go over with a little bit on my eyelids. You apply however much you feel that you need on your lid area. I know how much I usually go for based on the rest of the face, like how much I'm gonna be applying on the rest of the face. So this works for me. Now what I'm doing is pressing the sponge over the eyelid area, just bouncing it over all the way across so that it covers everywhere, including the inner part, this area here. Let's get some powder. I'm gonna get my Ben Eye Banana Powder and my Laura Mercier Powder Puff. And I'm just basically gonna press this in now. I've pressed that in and now what I'm doing is getting my Real Techniques brush and just kind of like dusting off all the powder. Right, eyelids are completely ready now. And now this is where I'm gonna apply this to my under eye area. And this is gonna to help to kind of like cover my dark circles, obviously. Gives me a lifted finish. So this is part concealing and part contouring. I like to let that sit just for a little while. So while that's sitting there, I just wanna very quickly explain what I'm gonna call each product. So I'm working with concealers now, cause that's what I'm gonna show you how to contour with and how you can sculpt your face with it. I'm gonna to explain to you as I go along why, right? But I really want you to focus on the areas that I'm applying it to. So what part of the face and understanding the facial structure, we're not just kind of slapping it on anywhere. It, the place that we apply it is very strategic to kind of mimic shadows and give the illusion of a different kind of shape. Now, what I wanna do is really enhance certain areas too, as well as disguise certain areas. Now, I'm gonna be calling one product the light concealer and one product the dark concealer. It's pretty obvious which one is which. So I'm working with the light concealer first. Now, the reason we have two products there, we've got a light and a dark. Now, when you think about light, you think about, let's just think about white, right? So when I say light concealer, think of white. It's easy for the light to bounce off of that white and give the illusion of a larger surface area, right? Because it's white. Now, when you think of the dark concealer, I want you to think of black. And when you think of a light bouncing off of black, it doesn't bounce off of black because there's no, there's nothing for it to bounce off of because it's so dark. I want you to think about that when you think about a light and a dark concealer. What we're gonna be doing with the light concealer is helping to make the surface area look a bit bigger, enhance those areas. Remember how I mentioned about how when the light bounces off, it gives the illusion of a larger surface area. And when we are working with the dark concealer, I want you to imagine, right, okay, no light is bouncing off of that. So that can be used to actually disguise areas and just kind of almost reshape certain areas. What I want you to remember is those two, the light and the dark work hand in hand. If you only to use the light, yes, it will help to enhance certain areas. But when you use it with that dark shade, it's like a match made in heaven it like literally complete they complete one another so the light will be working at its best and the dark will be working at its best so when you actually put those two together and you've got light areas and then you've got dark areas on your face it creates depth and that is what I really want to kind of explain to you that what we're creating is depth on the face because of where we're going to be applying it it's also helping to kind of sculpt the face so I really hope that kind of made sense and I want you to understand what the light concealer does. I want you to understand what the dark concealer does. Now, as well as obviously everything that I've explained, how light and dark work together really well, I want you to also understand that we're also helping to conceal. Primarily, it's the light shade 
that is really going to be doing a lot a lot of the concealing for us I felt like that didn't come out of my mouth right a lot of, a lot of a lot of the concealing for us the dark shade i like to use a concealer still because i feel like the texture is great it it, it dries up nicely on the skin and it it works well if you're using the same kind of texture you know i don't want to use a contour product which then kind of slides all over the place or kind of like fades after a little while so at least i know when i'm using concealers I'm kind of like, you know, getting the best of everything. I'm getting some concealing. I'm also helping to enhance areas and disguise areas. And I know it's going to stay put there because that's what concealer is made to do as well. I hope this all makes sense. Now we're going to go in and buff this under eye area. So I'm just literally pressing the sponge into the under eye area. See how nicely that just gives me the most flawless finish because we let it set for a little while. Same on this side. My hair's a bit messy today. Please don't mind it. I don't usually have it like this, but the next video I'm filming is very special and I need it to be loose so that I can actually curl it and do loads of stuff with it, which I'm really excited about you guys seeing. Now what I'm going to do is go for a different concealer. The, I, I just want to make this very, very clear, right? Because I, uh, when a couple of you have seen the videos in the past that I've done, you've seen that I use maybe two concealers as a light concealer. And you're like, wait up, like, whoa, that's too many concealers going on. Like, I'm not going to use too, that many concealers. I really, really want you to understand that when you see me doing these videos, I really am showing you how good products are, certain products are that I absolutely love, but also the technique. The only reason that I use two light concealers the only reason it has nothing to do with the technique like in terms of the underpainting technique at all i like more coverage on my under eye but the rest of my face i don't like it to be too heavy so if i was to use my shape tape everywhere else it's just going to be too like almost mask like so the only reason i use a separate concealer is because this is like not much coverage the nars radiant concealer is not much coverage for me it's just not strong enough for my under eye area but it's perfect for the rest of the face so it's not really to do with the color it's purely down to the fact that one gives me good coverage and I only want that on my under eye area. The other one is not the best coverage, but it's light enough to be able to give me just the right amount of coverage that I need for the rest of the face, you know? I really hope that makes sense. So yeah, when you look at this and you're like, hell no, I'm not using like two, three concealers, just bear with me, trust me. And I hope you understand why I'm using two concealers. Now I'm gonna go in to this area here, right? So and just drawing a line again you don't have to make it this thick guys the only reason i'm really doing it this thick is because i'm going for you know like i, I want you guys to really see it you know if i do a little dash here and there it's really not going to be that visible to you so i just want you to be able to see it all properly now i'm going to apply this and then i'm going to explain to you why Remember when we did the Tarte Shape Tape on the under eye area? Do you remember we lifted it here a little bit? That is helping to enhance the area and it's also helping to lift the area, right? So it's helping to just make that area look a little bit more lifted. Now, can you see with every product that I've applied here, like everywhere that I've applied it, it's kind of like enhancing those areas. So we've got the forehead here, because even though I may not really be that fussed about the coverage, I know that I need it to kind of go flow with the rest of the face. If I were to leave the forehead completely out, I've seen some people not apply any foundation or concealer to their forehead, and the rest of the face is like flawless. And it doesn't mean that the foreheads are not flawless. It just means that it looks so disconnected to the rest of the face. So I hope that all makes sense. What I'm doing here is I'm lifting these corners of my mouth because I want that lifted look. And I can tend to be a little bit darker around this area the nose is done because i want to elongate it and once i apply that dark concealer it's gonna like kind of like just all of a sudden take it to a different level which i'm going to show you and then obviously forehead want to enhance it like i said and the chin it helps to elongate my face so now just take a look at my face before i blend everything in and you can really kind of i want you to really think about what i just said we've got the forehead to enhance the area down the nose to enhance it but again every single section here is going to just be boosted when i apply that dark shade and then we've got this area here which is helping to lift the area so it's kind of reshaping the face a little bit and kind of enhancing areas so giving it back back that kind of that youth or that lifted look that you really want so now that we've applied that i'm now going to very quickly apply my dark shade and then i'm going to explain to you why i've applied it in those areas
I want you to look carefully at my face because I really want to explain as you're looking at my face and everywhere that I've kind of contoured, I want to explain to you how it's all kind of like working hand in hand. Now the forehead area we enhanced and what we're gonna be doing is where we've got a dark shade here, right? That is gonna to help to just slim down the forehead a bit. So this area here, but you will notice more of a difference when I start buffing everything in. That's when you'll really see it. But I really want you to see the lines at the moment so you can really see my positioning of everything, you know, my placement of everything. So we've got two dark shades here. It's very close to the hairline because we're gonna be blending this into the hairline. This is gonna kind of like make this look a bit smaller there but then the light shade is gonna enhance that area. Do you see what I mean? If I had only applied this, it's really doing half the job. Now the nose area, you've got a little kind of V shape just in the tip of my nose because personally, I feel like the tip of my nose is a little bit bulbous. So what I like to do is just make the tip look smaller and that V there is gonna really help to just kind of like give it that nice small button effect, which I personally like. I've got the dark shade on either side of the bridge of my nose. The light shade that I applied there helps to kind of sharpen that kind of lengthen the bridge of the nose. And this dark shade here helps to just make this look slimmer, right? Now we've got this section here and here it comes from the top of the ear or roughly around that area and it comes in but we don't ever bring it too far in because it's just going to look way too kind of sharp then so you should kind of keep those the, the dark shades more towards the perimeter of the face when you're working on the larger surface area of the face this area here jawline don't put it above the jawline always go below the jawline because that's where you want to really shade it in downwards so it gives the illusion of a shadow there and makes your jawline look sharper so it's great if you suffer from like jowling or you feel that you just don't see a jawline this chin area here is helps to elongate that because I don't want it to look too short. So everything kind of works hand in hand. And now I'm going to start buffing it all in. I have two Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood complexion brushes. I've got one for my dark shade and one for my light shade. I'm going to start with the light shade first because that's the first one that we actually applied. And now I'm basically just kind of brushing it in. I'm going to leave that nose area because it's going to start touching the dark area. Otherwise, I'm just going to kind of like go along the chin. So you can you see I'm keeping everything in its original position, but I'm basically just buffing it in and that will give me a really nice flawless finish but also keep that lift there everywhere that I wanted it. I did forget to mention these two dark little dots here because when you apply just a tiny dot here, tiny dot here, it helps to actually make the lips look bigger that way. Really go small with your amount because if you do too much, it just looks like a moustache. So, okay, now what I'm gonna be doing is going into the dark shade. I'm gonna use my other brush. I'm gonna start with actually just buffing this into the hairline, but I'm keeping the shape, like the positioning, the placement where it is. I don't wanna blend it out too much. Like I don't want it to look like all of a sudden it's gone into a different area. Can you see this like it looks more like a shadow now? And now same thing here, we are gonna just basically keep, we're gonna keep pressing. We're not bringing it too far into the face. We wanna keep the positioning where it is, but we just want that to look really nice and soft now. So same thing here, we are going to be just buffing this in here and then do the jawline. See how I'm just buffing this downwards now? So I really hope you can see how that's made the face look sharper. But can you imagine just leaving this as it is? It's just way too much. We're going to be putting a veil of colour on top shortly. I'm flipping the brush, so I'm using the smaller part. And I'm going to keep this shape the same. I want to just soften it so it doesn't look so kind of sharp, you know. And that light shade down the middle, I'm just going to literally go over with my finger a little bit so it doesn't look like there's too much product there. And then right here, same thing. Very, very subtle, but everything is still there. It's kind of obvious, but it's soft right but now we're going to make it even softer shortly now let's apply a little bit of blush because i really do want to see, like show you that whole underpainting underpainting technique in full i'm going to be using this which is from hins ash it's this new color fluid ultra matte in heartist and this looks like a really nice color so i'm going to just paint this kind of on just in this area here and you can the great thing about underpainting that is if you wanna go extra with everything, you really can because you're, you're gonna go over with a veil of color, which is gonna make it look a lot more kind of subtle. So I'm just getting my Sigma F67 brush and I'm just basically gonna buff this in. This is the first time I'm using this, guys, and I love it. It literally just blends in so easily. I love that. And this color is just so nice. And I have a feeling this is gonna be great like if you wanna mix it with other shades, obviously, because when a makeup artist creates products, 
it works way better because we take into account mixing because that's what we love to do and that's what we have to do when we're working on clients. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my foundation. So I really hope you can see how this is kind of given the face depth. It's all a bit kind of a bit too much at the moment. So we're gonna get our foundation. Okay, and the foundation I'm gonna use is my Hourglass Ambient Soft Glow Foundation. My shade is 10.5 and it's a really, really lovely foundation. I'm just gonna put this on the back of my hand. Now this is where we're gonna buff this into the skin because I'm sure you're probably wondering, well, if it's gonna be a kind of like veil of color on top, then isn't it gonna move everything around? It really doesn't as long as you apply it in the correct way. Plus, if you were to apply contour, like as in like actual contour products, you know, like cream contours, and you were to do that first, and then you were to go in with your foundation, the problem you have is the products underneath will probably move because they're not meant to set right? They're, 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 when you look at kind of cream contour products, the majority of them don't really set and stay in place. And that's why I love using concealers because obviously I'm going to get my conceal concealing out of it, right? It's going to conceal the areas that I want it to conceal. But the brilliant thing about it, concealer is made to actually set, right? It's made to set or as, much, as, as good as it could possibly set, right? So when you apply it, you actually like like now this is not going to go anywhere it's much easier for me to apply that foundation on top because it's not actually going to move the product around anywhere so now what i'm doing is i'm getting this foundation i'm buffing it into my sponge first so i don't want to get a whole dollop of it and just move it around I'm, i've buffed it into my sponge first and then i'm going to start buffing it into my forehead right so i'm going and being like very clever with how i'm applying it where i'm applying it work your way down from the top and i'm never gliding i'm always bouncing right so this sponge will never kind of move back and forth the only place it kind of does is like along the jawline because i really want to make sure i get that blended in now i'm gonna go on the under eye area you're gonna see how everything starts to look really soft focus and i can promise you had you not have applied any of this contouring with concealer underneath and you had just gone in with your foundation generally it would not look the same at all it would look very flat just like you've just put foundation on and that's it like this gives you a way more kind of softer finish and let me just answer a couple of questions that i can remember off the top of my head on instagram like someone put i've tried this technique but then when i apply my foundation i feel like everything looks really flat and it just covers everything up that's because you're probably using a high coverage foundation a high coverage foundation is not going to work with this technique because what's the point of doing anything underneath then so a high coverage foundation is usually there because you want full coverage just from the foundation this isn't for that it doesn't work with a full coverage foundation you need a foundation which doesn't have amazing coverage because there's no point in it because you want all this to peek through right so you've got to think about how you're kind of what products you're using okay so we are just kind of like buffing this all in i love how this pink is just peeking through it's like the perfect amount right now we've got to the uh kind of like jawline i'm just gonna really kind of make sure that's nicely blended in see how you can still see the sculpting coming through and trust me i can't stress this enough if had i not put any of it underneath it would not look like this at all. Now I'm gonna go in with my powder. I'm gonna go in with my Ben Eye. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is just press this in. You can use whatever powder you want. I am just gonna basically press this in there, just to my under eye areas. And can you see how I'm kind of like mimicking where I applied all the light shade concealer? And I'm just dusting it off with a big brush. I really want, I know I don't have my brows or anything done, but I really want you guys to see, like, you can still see that sculpting. So you can still see that very, like, lightly peeking through. You can still see the blush coming through. Obviously, it's all a bit matte at the moment, but I quite like it that way. But if you don't like it matte, you can spray, like, a setting spray on top, something which is, like, a dewy setting spray to kind of soften it. Or give it an hour and your natural oils will come out and it'll all, all look a bit more kind of, like, lived in. But this is basically underpainting. Like, this is when you have that really nice kind of, like, soft focus look. Let me just very quickly do my brows. I'll be back in a sec. 
And I'm back, I've done my brows, I've just added the tiniest amount of lip liner. And now what I wanna do is just kinda show you how you can contour on top with powder if you want to. So if you feel like you want to just bring something out a little bit more, like everything's very soft focused, but if you really, really wanna go a bit extra, like sometimes I go extra on my nose area, that's what I'm gonna show you. Now I like to use a bronzer because it's a little bit more warming. I don't really like to use kind of gray products on my skin. It doesn't do anything and, well, to my skin anyway. And then in certain lines, it looks like I've got a dock. It just looks weird. So anyway, I'm going to use this. It works perfectly. This is my Fenty Sunstalker bronzer in Shady Biz and my Fenty 200 brush. Now this is my dark shade. So remember we got light and dark. I'm doing dark first. So this is, I'm going to do the, well, this is my brush. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> I'm going to do my V. So exactly the same as what we did with the concealer, but I'm doing it with the powder. And then I'm going down the sides of the bridge of the nose. And then sometimes I like to just cut it off at the top there. So it's just a little bit more kind of buttony. And that's basically my dark shade done. Next I go to my light shade, right? This is to enhance the area. And I'm going into a highlighter. I'm using my Tom Ford Skin Illuminating Powder Duo in Mood Light. And this is my 234 brush from Zoeva. And what I'm doing is applying a little bit just on the tip of my nose. And that kind of like makes sure that it doesn't all look so dark and it just enhances the tip. Then I go along the bridge of my nose here, but just like a little bit. I don't like it to be like a full line down the middle. It's a bit too much. And that basically is it. So I really do hope that that's kind of helped you with the whole underpainting technique and exactly how you can contour and sculpt with concealer to have a really nice kind of flawless base. I've tried to explain it in the easiest way I could possibly find. And I know a lot of you tend to say that you love how easy I make it to understand, but I really do, really do hope that if you have any questions, let me know in the comments box below. And I just wanted to finish with letting you guys know that I now have super thanks on my channel if I haven't already mentioned it before. And what that means is that it gives you guys a chance to support my channel even more. As you know, I don't hold back on any information that I give you guys. I genuinely give you everything I know. This is just kind of like a little way for you to be able to help support my channel. It's a way to kind of help me reinvest back into my business for you guys so that I can maybe like hire models and show you different kind of age groups, you know? Like it would really, really mean a lot to me if you guys left your little thanks there. That would really, really mean the world to me. And it plus it also helps me to see your comment more so your comment actually stands out more to me so that I can actually see right okay ah this person left a super thanks well I really want to give them a shout out on the video or I really want to see what they have to have to say and like actually like you know like spend the time answering you back because I appreciate whatever help you guys will give me to make this channel even bigger and better for you guys because everything I do in this channel is for you guys and I want to kind of create a movement where people are just pros at their makeup and you just feel like you you can you can do it like you are full on bossing the whole makeup game. Like I, I I, want you guys to look at looks that you see on Instagram and think, you know what, I can do that. That's what I'm trying to kind of do here. I'm trying to instill confidence in so many people. So if you leave a super thanks, I appreciate all of you anyway. By leaving a super thanks, it helps me, it helps the channel, it helps me to be able to give you more stuff that you haven't seen yet, you know? So these are the things that I really wanna do. Sometimes it may be that I need to upgrade my equipment, you know, or like I said, I wanna hire a model from a professional agency so that I can actually, you know, give you, like have someone sitting here and give you exactly what you guys wanna see. So yeah, I would really, really appreciate your support. And wherever you are in the world, I hope you have the most productive, blessed and fun day ever. I hope you've enjoyed this video today. Now, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments box below. And don't forget the products are all listed in the description box below too. So all you need to do is head over, click on the link and it will take you straight to it. If you do like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Until the next video, take care and I'll see you soon.